Today we will study class 10th subject elements of business unit 3 that is communication in business. Well, communication is fundamental to the existence and survival of humans as well as organizations. So, what is communication? Well, the word communication has been derived from a Latin word that is communicare which means to share. Communication may be defined as an interchange of thoughts or information between two or more persons to bring about mutual understanding and desired action. In simple words, the act of sharing or exchanging information ideas or feelings is communication. Communication is a social process of interaction through messages. There is an exchange of facts, ideas, opinions or emotions by two or more persons. There are different meaning and methods of communication. They are communication through letter or through email or through video conferencing or communication through telephone. Now we will study the process of communication. The process of communication involves certain steps under which one person transmits his or her thoughts to another person and get a reply in return. Such a process can be understood through the following diagram. Firstly, sender sends his or her thoughts. It could be anything such as a request, order, inquiry, etc. Then encoding is done. That is sender converts thought into receivable form. Then transmission of information is done. It may be oral or written. Then there is noise and barriers. It could be noise, errors and capacity of understanding etc. Then idea is received. A successful communication or decoding. A successful decoding means idea is received. Then feedback is obtained. Well, we will discuss the details of these elements in few minutes. Every communication involves at least one sender, a message and a recipient. This may sound simple, but communication is a very complex subject. The transmission of message from sender to recipient can be affected by huge range of things. These include our emotions or the cultural situation or medium used to communicate or even our location. That's one. Good communication skills are considered so desirable by the employers around the world. Good communication means an accurate, effective and clear way of expressing thoughts. Well, let's discuss the elements of the communication process. The first element is the sender. The sender or source may be an individual who may speak, write, draw or does gesturing or a communication organization that is a newspaper or a publishing house or a TV channel. The sender may use oral or written or graphic signs or symbols to convey the message. Communication skills, attitude and knowledge of the content of the sender have an impact on the effectiveness of, of the communication. Well, the next element is messages. Messages are made of signs or symbols or codes that are signals which represent something. Messages may be in the form of ink on the paper or sound wave in the air or impulse in an electronic current or a wave in the hand or a flag in the air or 
any other signal capable of being interpreted meaningfully. Messages are encoded and those who receive them must decode them to interpret or understand the meaning of the message. The messages constitute the core of the communication process. It should be formed in such a way that it suits the specific needs of the sender. Well, the next element of the communication process is transmission. It refers to the means employed to receive the message. It refers to five senses that is seeing, touch, hearing or smelling or taste. A message is received through any of these modes. A message may be seen through print or virtual media. It can be heard through social media or voice, audio or speech or musical instruments. It can be seen and heard as in the case of films, TV or any other audio visual media. The next element of communication process is the receiver. It is also called as the destination. It may be an individual or a group or a crowd reading or listening or watching the message. The receiver is the object of the communication process. Communication cannot take place without a receiver for whom the message is meant. We receive a message, interpret it and then derive meaning from it. We know that for a successful communication, the receiver should receive the message in the same way. It was meant by the sender. In interpersonal communication, the receiver shares a close relationship with the sender, which gradually gets diluted in group or mass communication. Now, the next element is feedback. It is receiver's reaction to the message. It may be favorable or unfavorable. But feedback is necessary to know if the communication has been effective or not. Feedback includes a questionnaire or a letter to the editor or opinion or forum or comments or even protest etc. The support received in response to the appeal in media for the assistance for the family of people killed in a tsunami or any other natural calamity can be seen as an example of how feedback affects communication. Even the applause of an audience watching a musical program or a mob turning violent during a match may be described as a response to a particular event and hence feedback. Now, the last element is noise. For a communication to be successful, it must be free from noise. Noise in communication theory refers to any limitation or obstacle in the process of message transmission. The process explained above can be summarized as sender's thought, then encoding, then transmission through media. Crossing the noise and barrier, then decoding is done, then idea is received, then feedback is obtained. Now we will discuss the methods of communication. The method means the technique through which message is transmitted or communicated. Broadly and primarily, there are two methods, namely oral communication and written communication. Well, oral communication includes face-to-face -face meeting or telecommunication, which is telephone, communication through telephone or video conferencing or presentations. Now, written communication includes letters, reports, and emails. Now, we will discuss the purpose of business communication. 
the purpose of business communication can be divided into two parts that is internal purpose and external purpose internal purpose includes setting goal and objectives making and implementing decisions employer and employee inter interaction for any purpose such as appraisal dispute resolution now external purpose includes dealing with customer negotiation with supplier and financer or interaction with government officer or hiring new employee or sales and promotion of business well now we will discuss the importance of business communication so business communication helps in getting the desired job done communication acts as a base for any action starting any activity begins with communication which brings information necessary to begin with now communication helps maintaining social relationship with employee and client good communication makes it easier to address individual problems or concerns between employees and supervisors when they arise good workplace relationship and a positive work environment are critical for a successful business as unhappy staff have a negative impact on the productivity and customer service therefore good communication helps in maintaining social relationship now the next point is it helps in business promotion and job promotion good communication skills such as open and honest communication eliminate surprises and reinforce your communication to solve problems and support the business this can help you earn promotions and secure leadership positions in your current company or organization pursue new advanced career opportunity elsewhere well communication also helps in solving problems and resolving disputes listening is a part of communication used to understand situation fully good communicator listens well think before they speak and reacts appropriately a good listener is more likely to find solution without becoming defensive when conflicts arise good communicators address the problem right away and listen to the other side well now we will discuss the types of communication there are mainly two types of communication that is verbal communication and non verbal communication verbal communication is a type of oral communication wherein message is transmitted through spoken words here the sender gives word to his feelings thoughts ideas opinions and expresses them in the form of speech or discussions or presentations or conversations verbal communication is the use of words to convey a message some forms of verbal communication are written and oral communication well the examples of written communication are letters or texting or writing email examples of oral communication are face to face conversation speeches or radio now non verbal communication is the use of body language to convey a message one main form of non verbal communication is body language well examples of body language are covering mouth it is a gesture used to hide a smile or head nod it is a gesture to show your agreement of finger tapping this shows impatience or impatience or tried of waiting or arms crossed over chest 
This gesture indicates defensiveness or stress. Well, that's all for this topic. See you again very soon. Till then, keep studying and stay safe. Goodbye.